Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for July 10th, 2021, recorded around 3.10 p.m. Eastern Time. Not too much to talk about over the next couple of days here for the tropics, but a few interesting things that we have to point out in a look at when the window of more favorable opportunity comes into the Atlantic Basin. So looking at everything, taking a wild look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, not too much to speak about right now. Again, dry Saharan air dominating most of the Atlantic Basin at the moment. Although we do have the suppressed um, phase here of the Kelvin wave passing over and also the suppressed latitude of the intertropical convergence zone, helping to keep and squash most of the development here in the low latitudes. And this is kind of where ELSA came out of. But by and large, mostly very stable conditions across this whole entire part here of the basin. And you can see kind of the leftover spin there of Elsa way up here in the Canadian Maritimes. And this old tropical low that was over Texas bringing all that heavy rainfall has now kind of moved over into parts of Mexico here and southern Texas. We'll be watching the eastern Pacific Basin over the next couple of days for development. But even development chances there are not the greatest. But development chances are increasing. But nothing threatening land at least at the moment. If we take a wide look here across the eastern and Atlantic uh, basins, uh, we notice that we can see in the sea surface temperature anomaly map updated as of yesterday that we have these cooler anomalies now starting to pop back up here into the tropic or into the equatorial Pacific regions. And this has led towards this is a result of a very strong or several strong easterly wind bursts that have occurred across the area. And that has led to upwelling of cooler water just below the surface. And that has now kind of subsequently spread westward with time and has cooled off this area in the equatorial Pacific. Uh, mainly the area focuses in the Nino 3-4 region, which is this area out and through here. This is the El Nino Southern Oscillation Index region that we typically look for for determining La Nina or El Nino conditions. Right now we are in, in heading towards a cool neutral phase. And then this will likely transition over towards a full La Nina event uh, by the time we get into um, the winter months of this year. In the Atlantic Basin, we also notice that we have a semi-warm uh, phase here of the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation, the AMO phase. Uh, it is not a classic AMO phase. You notice that we have a very strong, uh, basically El Nino event here in the southern Atlantic, in the equatorial regions. This is known as an Atlantic Nino event, the Atlantic El Nino, basically. And this does have a role in the upcoming hurricane season. We've already seen that played out here. Uh, this basically leads towards increased uh, convec convective activity, especially down here across portions of the southern main development region. And this also helps to drag the intertropical convergence zone far enough to the south that these tropical waves that come off here come off at pretty low latitudes and they're not uh, they're not immediately squashed by the cooler more unfavorable conditions out here across the northern part of the MDR and that's kind of where we saw Elsa come off at at about five degrees latitude which is about right through here and we kind of know the rest of that story as it kind of came out like that this was a very long track system we'll take a look at that here in a moment but this has implications. Uh, the subtropical Atlantic is also warmer compared to the long-term average. This will uh, help to set up a big uh, blocking area of high pressure out here towards the peak of the season, pushing all these storms westward with time and not allowing these storms to recurve as easily. And uh, when you don't have these recurving storms, they impact land. Where does everyone live? West of about uh, 55 uh, degrees uh, west latitudes. So this is important because it has implications for the upcoming hurricane season. We also noticed that parts of the Gulf are just slightly below average. This is because of Elsa tracking up through this area. These waters are very easily disturbed in the Gulf. But other than that, most of everything is pretty solid for the upcoming peak. Now we're seeing a big lull in activity right now because we have a suppressed phase of the Kelvin wave passing over the Atlantic Basin. Just so you can get your bearing straight, uh, this The darker red colors here in oranges, this is uh, sinking air, and conversely, the blues and cyans here 
our rising air in the atmosphere. And where you have the sinking air right now dominated over Africa currently, over the Eastern Atlantic and over Africa. And this will kind of be traversing over the continent of, uh, over the continent there. And then this will kind of be pushing over into parts of the Indian Ocean and Western Pacific over the next several weeks. This isn't going to be a little bit slow to move across. It takes, you know, uh, a couple of, of weeks for this to traverse across the area. So the effects of the suppressed phase of the Kelvin wave are just now being felt across the Atlantic Basin, and they'll be continued to be felt for the next several weeks. We do have an active phase, though, of the Kelvin wave, a positive convectively coupled Kelvin wave passing over the eastern Pacific. This will move into the Atlantic Basin over the next couple of weeks. And as it traverses off towards the east here, once this gets over Africa, this is when the pattern is going to start to flip for a more favorable period. So within the next about uh, four to five weeks or so, really as starting as early as the next about three and a half weeks onward, the pattern becomes a little bit more favorable and conducive for tropical cyclone genesis. And I believe that once we start to get really out past about the latter half of July here, once we get out past about July 24th, the activity will likely start to pick up in response to the interseasonal phase. We'll have a very strong velocity potential that's sitting over this area, positive velocities across here leading towards upward moving air, the Matt and Julian oscillation coming into phase as well. And that is likely to kind of help uh, fuel the fire per se for the upcoming peak here of the season. Now, one thing that I did find here, this is uh, this is actually a plot that I kind of generated, uh, but this is Hurricane Elsa and its entire life uh, span uh, from the time it became a designated uh, invest here and a subsequent uh, potential tropical cyclone when advisories were issued until the last advisory yesterday. Uh, we can see here that, again, the storm was a fairly long-tracked, low-latitude system. Again, it really didn't start gaining significant latitude until... Uh, it really got about 55 degrees west, where conditions are a little bit more favorable for development. This did become a hurricane in the Caribbean, and that kind of speaks to itself. We're not supposed to have hurricanes in the Caribbean this time of the year. And again, this basically, the last advisory actually was initiated as of yesterday. This was a nine-day storm event, and it created an ACE index of 9.5. And its strongest was right about here at 75 knots and a pressure of 991 millibars. Right there was its strongest and then it subsequently weakened. Became a hurricane off the coast there of Florida once again and then made landfall near Cedar Key and moved up here into the Long Island area where the last advisory was issued. Now, given the fact that we've had significant ACE generated by this, uh, just about a little under about 10 units of ACE, uh, the ACE index is basically the accumulated cyclone energy, and it totals up the entire index, uh, energy in index from the entire season, and that gets totaled up at the end of the year for your final ACE index. And the one thing that I did find interesting, this was also generated uh, by me, uh, but this is the ACE index as compared to last year. And again, last year here is in kind of the faded black line and the current ACE index is actually this darker uh, solid black line. And we noticed that today's ACE uh, compared through today is about 12.8 units, whereas this time last year we had an ACE index that was roughly at about 9 or 10 uh, it doesn't really kind of say on here, but it kind of gives you a, a rough estimate of around 9 to 10 units of ACE uh, through July 10th of last year. And through July 10th of this year, we've seen an ACE index of about uh, 13 units uh, rounded. So what this basically gives us, we are above 2020 in terms of this time last year. How does this stack up to the rest of the climatology? Well, we are actually above most of the climatology in about the 10 to 90 percent uh, tile range, uh, we are above that range and we are closer towards the maximum ACE index for uh, and through July 10th. Now compare this to 2017, one of the busiest years uh, ACE-wise uh, in, in the recent memory since 2005. Uh, this is actually well above the ACE index of 2017 through this time 
and once again fall, uh, falls in between about the 99th percentile, uh, closer towards the maximum range. Uh, but you can kind of see where the you know tropical cyclones really started to increase this rapid increase all the way up to that maximum threshold uh, threshold there at about 245. Uh, we were just at about uh, 225 there for the ACE index of 2017. So we really kind of ended on the high note, especially for October and September of 2017. But right now we do stack up actually fairly nicely above average from 2017. If we compare this back to 2018, we actually notice that we're just at the average. We can kind of zoom in here again. The ACE index uh, through today is about the 12.8 units. And this pretty much lines up very well with 2018 so far. But you notice that 2018 actually fell within that uh, 25 to 75 percentile range uh, towards the latter half of the season. That actually goes out towards August and September. And uh, really, Florence was the major long tracker. And then, of course, Hurricane Michael there uh, in October. Uh, that kind of led towards an increase. This was a mainly result there of Florence and a couple of other storms. Uh, and we actually generated uh, the total ACE index of just over uh, 132 units of ACE. And then compare this to uh, 2019, again, just another uh, busy season uh, with the long track Dorian from 2019, we still compare above the long term average in that regard. So we are above average for most of the seasons so far. Now, given the fact that this is going to be a low period uh, for the next couple of weeks, this is about through mid July right here. And then we go into August, which is August 1st right here we should actually start to fall under the 2017 threshold, assuming we don't get another storm uh, that generates significant A's uh, through August 1st. Uh, but then after August 1st, we should start to kind of follow this line more similarly to 2017, in my opinion, or I'm sorry, this, this is 2020. Uh, but 2017 will still probably be above the average through about August 1st. And then after August 1st, we'll probably end up falling uh, below 2017 uh, so long as we don't get a, a major ACE producer between now and about August 15th or so. But for 2020, uh, we should kind of be following, again, maybe just slightly below 2020 lines uh, until we get to the uh, part of August there. Then we should uh, start to increase that here uh, closer to 2020 origins there. And then for 2018, uh, we'll pretty much be following right at or just slightly below 18. Uh, but then again, this basically would go out to about mid to late August uh, that we would be significantly below. So we should be rising substantially above 2018 numbers. And for 2019, we'll pretty much be at uh, or above the long term average uh, compared to 2019 until about mid-August as well. So we should be following very closely and similarly to 2020, closely followed then by 2017, at least through the mid part there of August. Now, looking forward to what could be happening in the future, we have two tropical systems in the Eastern Pacific Basin. We'll be monitoring uh, two waves not designated as of invest right now. This given a 20% chance by the Hurricane Center, this one with a 60% chance both of these should be moving away from land. I don't see any pattern that would steer this in towards land here, uh, like we saw with uh, other storms. Uh, but again, this could generate some swells as this could become even a powerful hurricane out here in the open waters of the tropical Pacific. The GFS forecast model real quickly. This is the 12C run valve for 2 p.m. this afternoon, a 50 millibar vorticity. Again, not really showing much here. We do have a storm that ends up generating here. Uh, really by about uh, Thursday, early Thursday morning, we have a storm here that goes well on its way uh, to becoming a tropical cyclone. But this even is still just over about uh, 200, 300 miles away from land. So maybe some swells that will be impacting this area. But other than that, no real significant concerns. Notice we have the big portion here of the Bermuda Azores High. The Azores portion being back here, the Bermuda portion right here. Big area of high pressure 
this would be a nasty steering flow late in the season. We can actually kind of take a look at that here in the 500 millibar height anomalies. And uh, we'll just run this forward out in time. Notice what I don't like is that we have significant ridging over this area out here. And just for what it's worth, if we look here at the CFS monthly, uh, we notice that we have, again, a pretty strong ridge uh, that builds over by September and October. We have a pretty stout ridge over here. And this would basically be forcing a lot of our systems westward with time and not allow for a significant recurve like you would see with consistent troughiness over here. And uh, the can sips model, again, kind of much of the same, but it's a little bit more aggressive. Big dominant ridging over here across the northeast of Canadian Maritimes with that ridge kind of extending all the way out here, forcing storms westwardly with time. This could be a very interesting setup for the peak of the hurricane season, so we'll just have to be monitoring the progress of that. It does make sense given the fact that these sea surface temperatures are uh, comparatively warmer to the long-term average and by a significant margin, all right? So that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. I'll talk to you guys again some more over the next couple of days.